are listening to the Amodama podcast. In this series, Amoda explores her essential teaching through conversation and excerpts from interviews and events. To find out more about events and to sign up for her newsletter, go to www.amodama.com. Please subscribe, comment and share if this podcast moves you. And if you feel called to donate, please go to the website. Thanks for listening and we hope you enjoy. Greetings one and all and welcome back to another podcast with Amoda Ma and uh, myself, Kavi. It's a pleasure to be back, but it has been a really quite a long time. We've been away uh, on retreat and uh, now we're back to offer you a pre-Christmas uh, podcast that we hope will um, give an insight into some of the nuances of the awakening journey. Hello, Amoda. Hello, Kavi. So today we we are going to explore uh, awakening social interactions, relationships, conversations, and such thing. The reason is that we received an email recently from a, a listener, a very really quite an interesting uh, email asking us to talk about what happens to relationships and social interactions after an abiding awakening. So we'll explore it as we go along. I've got three specific questions to to launch into it with Amoda. And uh, and we're just going to start with the first one and see where we go from from here. So let's see. Amoda, like what, what let's explore what happens to conversations and relationships with so-called non-awakened people. And not an expression I particularly like, but <laughs> <laughs> is there anything to say, i.e., is there anything to talk about from an awakened, so-called awakened person with a non-awakened person? I mean, we are going to open this up and uh, and really kind of explore it. Some of the myths, some of the ideas, some of the yeah, some of the fairy tales that that exist around around it. So, is there anything much to talk about? Can you even have a relationship between uh, an awakened and a non-awakened person? And, and you know, this is at the moment we're going to talk very much about social relationships. And then, you know, as the next question and the next question rolls out, we're going to uh, uh, go in, go in a bit deeper to intimate relationships. But first of all, what's your experience? How how are you going to address this? So we're talking about. Uh perhaps two things within that one is friendships the other is social interactions yeah it's a slight uh, differentiation between the two although they cross over let's say friendships friendships that are based really in love <laughs> uh, maybe they're long term friendships um maybe their brotherly sisterly friendships and there is a deep bond of love that uh if you like transcends uh time and space um and transcends experiences personal experience that can continue of course We, with those kind of friendships that have a deep bond of love, we don't have to agree on everything. We don't have to have the same experiences. We don't have to have been on the same spiritual or human journey. Um, so perhaps those, those kind of friendships can continue. What do you talk about? You talk about anything and everything. You talk about how you feel. You talk about what's going on in your life. You talk about, I don't know, <laughs> there are many things, the beauty of the day or, or not. So, yeah. Um, social interactions that are more passing, that are more based on 
the need to belong, the need to agree, the need to voice one's opinion on a topic. Um, Very often social interactions begin with that, I I I think this, I believe that, uh, yeah, and it goes back and forth, uh, and you're kind of testing out whether there's a, there's a potential friendship here or a p- potential sense of belonging to something, some ideology or some like mindedness or some shared activity. Those often fall away because there's no more need. Can social interactions take place with a neighbor, with a, I don't know, (laughs) somebody in the store, somebody? Yeah, of course, the whole of the human experience continues, but it's not based in what we might call a kind of one-upmanship or a kind of comparison that often takes place in social interactions, which comes from an egoic paradigm. There's a much more open and sense of listening or 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 sense of silence. Um, Doesn't this d- depend? <clears throat> I mean, we haven't even really got to the base, you know, the root of the of the conversation yet. It's 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 sort of. Uh, doesn't it, it it also include the personality you know of, of the individual who's had an abiding awakening you know it's not just some blank slate that's being written upon uh oh awakening does this to every single individual who has an awakening you know you know not experience but a transformation into an awakened life there are many myths there are ideas, there are imaginations that people have about what happens. But from, from what I've seen, there's no, there's, there's no one size fits all. Still the personality, you know, continues. And some people are more social than others, whatever that means. And some people are more introverted than others. Some people move further away from society and some people are, are okay with kind of the movement of the interactions, uh, with with other people, would you say that? I think that definitely has a factor in it. Yes, there are there are individuals that were perhaps a more extrovert in personality, and others that are more introverted. That is that is true. So there's no one size fits all by any means. Um, however, I would say <laughs> that there's an element. It's almost like you go beyond introversion and extroversion. And I would say that's probably, uh, I don't want to make a blanket statement, but it's more likely to be the case. You, you, it's, it's like you, you, you can be seen as extrovert in a situation or seen as an introvert. They're, they're, They're not modalities that are so fixed where you need to be, uh, like an extrovert needs the energy of a social interaction, a social situation, more outgoing needs it to be fulfilled or or something, or an introvert needs to be in solitude, needs to withdraw to recharge their batteries. I think it sort of becomes more fluid. At least that's my experience. I think uh, you can actually play with it according to the situation, according to what is appropriate or according to whatever whim arises. However, I think that in awakening, there is less need for the usual social obligations or interactions that are based on some kind of need to belong or agree or be with like-minded people and so on. I mean, there are nuances to this, as you are, you know, saying. So, you know, what I hear you kind of saying is that relationships, the, the, the relationships that are built on neediness, neediness or need, yeah, need to control or need to be seen or need to for this to happen or need for that to happen, that that falls away. 
And so, you know, that renders the awakened one in some ways adrift. Yeah, adrift. Uh, uh, in terms of the social context, in terms of the social you know, gathering the marketplace. So they have to enter the marketplace and choose not to enter the marketplace if it's at all possible in these societies, which it's not really. So then they have to enter the marketplace because everybody does enter the marketplace, including the awakened one. So how do they move in the marketplace? That's what you're speaking to, isn't it? Because the idea of introvert and extrovert, we can throw out because actually they're to do with the self, to do with the ego self, or yeah, to do with the personality. So then you, you know, one, one is not moving from, yeah, from, from, from that, from that transactive mm. way. Mm. Yes. But you, I feel, you know, in my uh, viewing and knowing of you, you move very much from silence. It doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't have to be, oh, here I come in silence, you know, but, but there's an inner silence that moves you even in the, even in the store and even in the supermarket. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I think that is the case. I mean, I have met other awakened individuals other than ourselves <laughs> and the, the the tendency is 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 not for the uh, transactive quality of most social interactions. It's it's not from the place of needing to hang out with like minded people. It's not from the place of uh, needing to be seen and any of that. There tends to be well a, a silence that that is is the intelligence that moves everything so yeah it, it can move in many ways there's no rule I, I must say at this point that we should also say that an awakened individual doesn't need to talk to others that are awakened it doesn't need to talk about awakening so so that's something that <laughs> i think it, you know it, it can be a misunderstanding that well, uh, an awakened individual doesn't go to a social situation, uh, so and so, because there's no other awakened individuals to talk to about awakening. You really are not interested in speaking about awakening. Well, I'm not, uh, unless it's in a teaching situation, in which case it's a, a service, a role, and what seems to be the destiny of this one to to speak to that with great pleasure and with great joy. But it doesn't look for somebody... Uh, outside of that field to to go and talk about awakening. It's not a thing to to, to talk about. <laughs> oh, my experience was this and your experience is that. That whole comparative paradigm comes undone. So yes, there's a great silence and that silence can be playful or it can be totally self-contained and self-sufficient unto itself. So yes, a lot falls away, but my experience is, is it doesn't, it, it, and maybe this is part of my uh, uh, sort of personal mm. story, if you like, or, or shape, if you like, uh, is that I, I don't, I don't feel that as any great loss. There's no loss going on here. <laughs> you see, because uh, I, I'd known you for over twenty years now, and you know, in 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 many ways, you the the you that I've always known it has always been to a certain extent like 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 this. You know, you've had a quality of I don't call it introvert extrovert, but you've had a quality of innerness. You, you, you know, whereas let's say, now I don't talk about myself as being awakened or not. You know that. I don't care. I'm not, there's, there's, no, there's nothing, there's nothing like that happening here. But you know, I have been with you for 20 years and a lot has taken place on the inner level. And yet I'm a very much more, I wouldn't say social uh, uh, person, but I am quite interactive with people. And, uh, has it has have my the quality of my interactions changed? I would say yes. You would say yes. Yes. I would say yes. I would say yes. You have a natural capacity because 
let's call it more extrovert. I, I don't think it is because I, I see you as, as yeah. totally within your solitude mm. and totally fulfilled in that. So what does mm. it mean? You you do have, you have learned well, for whatever reason uh, to be more socially interactive and you have the capacity and skill for that. Uh, I don't have any particular great interest in that and never have done. Um, however, the the quality, yes, the quality of those interactions on your part have have changed. I have seen there is, uh, I don't know how to say this. There's there's less unnecessary. Yes, <laughs> Let's right. put it that yeah. way. There's less unnecessary just for the frisson of it, for the uh, whatever, <laughs> what we might call it. For the, it, it's much more focused. Uh, still, can be incredibly playful. Yeah. But uh, maybe that's just maturity. I don't know. But I think yeah. that superficial, unnecessary uh, interactions, conversations do fall away. And also yeah. any need to, uh, the, the, you know, the frisson of, of opinion, the frisson of uh, viewpoint, yes, this, perspective, this, that this. falls away. There's no need for that. And if okay, we look so around in most social interactions, that on, on whether it's about politics or about the state of the world or about even one's personal life and so on, that is very prevalent. Yeah, that's where uh, okay. a lot of the interaction. Yeah. Takes place. So let me so let me ask you a deeper question in a way about that because the nature of a lot of those those superficial, let's say, egoic based uh, interactions is by its very nature sticky yeah there's there's a, there's a sticky quality to it what Eckhart Tolle might call the pain body I just call the sticky body yeah and so it it, it draws people into its kind of spider link like web and everybody's doing this web thing or everywhere that that they go. And, you know, one of the things that does change completely is there's no longer a stickiness, not necessarily that there was greatly, but there was a vulnerability or a susceptibility to that stickiness in the old days. Yeah. And, and, and that, that changes, but other people don't change that. And so some of the tactics, the unconscious tactics that people play, you know, they, uh, you know, you, you or I or we, we meet people, yeah. We, we 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 tend to as little as possible, but we do meet people, and so there's that sticky quality. So, and the nature of that sticky quality is to stick other people to it, and they don't care whether you're awakened or not on the level of stickiness. What do you do? You mean when there's a, an attempt? Unconsciously for emotional entanglement. Correct. Emotional entanglement comes because my needs aren't met or I've been misunderstood or I need you to understand me or I feel rejected in some way or whatever that might be, depending on one's personal situation and story. Well, yeah, what does the, the awakened one do yeah, yeah. in response to that? Well, I don't know what they do. <laughs> <laughs> for myself. Well, you see, because but, suddenly, some somehow you see you've, there's an awareness of that game. Well, you which simply has just ended don't respond you. to it. You don't respond to it. You can listen without responding, without reacting. I should say. There's no reaction. There's no need to enter the argument. There's no need to enter the. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand you. Because that isn't what's going on. It's a projection, if that's the case. Uh, personally, one doesn't, you know, let's put it this way. One tends not to come into those interactions. You attract stickiness when there's still stickiness inside. You just don't come across them. You're very, very rarely. It just, it just doesn't. The, the, the resonant frequency that's going on just doesn't get involved in that. It doesn't come across it. So is there, there's no there's no relationship in that sense. I mean, is awakening the end of relationship in that sense? <laughs> I think it is. I would say so. Yes. Yeah, I think. I mean, yes, let's it call is. it like it is. I think awakening is the end of relationship. Yes. Because you yes. and I, you know, we we would we never say that we're we're having a relationship as such. 
Well, we're talking about years. intimate relationship now, so we can talk about that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need. Well, we've been through this so many times, right? We've spoken about this so many ways, and we've just run a course on it, a weekend retreat on this topic. Yes. Um, the whole conventional matrix not just in relationship, although everything's relationship, the whole conventional paradigm of interacting with reality, and reality includes other people, includes life, includes the world, comes undone. The question or the point of confusion that has uh, brought a questioner (laughs) to ask these questions, yeah, to us, is coming from the perspective of the one who is in in that paradigm, who cannot see how it would be. You cannot know how it is until it is. So when when this conventional matrix comes undone, the primary concern for the individual who's still on the path, let's say, is that I'll be left outside of the world, outside of the society, I'll be alone, I'll be lonely, I'll be misunderstood, and all the normal human interactions will will either just won't be there anymore or they'll be meaningless, but that means something to me. It means that I'll be lonely or left, you know, and so on. That That very belief or even that question is based on a false premise. Yes, everything comes undone. The sticky, transactive quality of the relationship with everything and everyone comes undone. But it doesn't leave you lonely. It doesn't leave you uh, unfulfilled. It doesn't feel you standing outside of anything. Because in awakening, you are intimate with all things, but it doesn't mean that you need anything or anyone to fulfill you. So there's a great fulfillment in just living this life as it unfolds, as it is, whether there is a relationship like with us, two people living and together and and working together in our case, whether it's a family member that you're close to or a friendship. In some ways, it doesn't matter because there's great fulfillment and perhaps some social interactions fall apart and some don't. They continue because they're based in a deeper love, a love that allows silence. You can be with a friend and be together let's say, in the field of silence, that doesn't mean that you never speak to each other, but it means that you're not filling in all the gaps and needing that sticky stuff to to glue the, the friendship together. It's much more about being together. So there's no, yeah, there's no lack of anything here. There's no loss. So yes, the the need for relationship falls apart, the need for friendship falls apart, the need for belonging falls apart, but it's not, you know, a a, a sort of rejection of anything. You're not rejected, you're not, yeah? And how it plays itself out, that is unique for each individual. I think you've uh, just about summed it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Let's just talk about maybe about an intimate. There was a question about in an intimate relationship. But there was two questions actually. One yes, was, there are, yes. What if you're in in an intimate relationship and you have awakened, and the other one hasn't, and they're not interested? That's one question. And then what happens in a relationship? For instance, I think they're alluding to our relationship. Um, Perhaps there's, you know, an, a, 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 a mutual awakening, although our awakening has taken place in, in different ways. We, that doesn't matter. But both of us have, wo- have woken up out of the dream of separation. Um, what happens? Do we just talk about awakening? Can we talk about anything else? You know, if we haven't got any opinions, then what's our relationship based on? So those are two 
questions that might be something we can <laughs> valuable to, to to tap into. Um, Proceed. <laughs> Proceed with tapping. Tapping. Um, a relationship with somebody that's not awakened. <sighs> Again, there's no there's no hard and fast rule. If the relationship, if an intimate relationship is based in love, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. If you have woken up out of the egoic dream, then all that remains is love. So then there's just love. You love the other, whether whether they're awakened or not. You know, awakening isn't a label, isn't a badge for the personality, for the personhood. So you don't care at that point. You're not caring whether the other is awakened. You see awakening everywhere. You see consciousness everywhere. You see, you know, you meet the other from 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 the oneness in you. So it, it doesn't matter. So the, the relationship can deepen. It, it can, it, yeah. yeah, it can, there's, there's, you're gone. Well, it's also true that because, you know, for the awakened one, let's say, uh, in a, in that kind of uh, dynamic, the uh, allegiance is to truth, to, to love and love's truth. And so then, because that new allegiance has, has uh, arisen as being uh, the, the primary, then it's, it's pretty much destiny takes, takes its course. If if it isn't it, it's not by design. It's through grace. Either well, the other will fall away, or the other won't fall away. Surely, that's right. I mean, if if you're in an unconscious relationship, one based on unconscious strategies of need and control and bullying and bartering, which is sounds terrible, but actually is what takes place in all relationships that are unconscious, if you like, um, then it's likely to fall away. <laughs> just as my relationship prior, <laughs> prior to this just came to an end because the, the strategies were no longer, um, sticky enough to keep us in place <laughs> and so on and so on. So, so yes, grace or, or divine destiny will, will take care of it. Either it will fall away, either it won't function anymore. Either, either you'll realize there's a great distance. You can't reach across the divide. It no longer fulfills you. And of course there can be difficulties in that because you don't want to let go. And this, mm, yeah, mm, but something mm. will happen that will, reveal that it's time to move on, right? <laughs> so that may take place. Or the other one might leave you. Yes. But it's not about, oh, you've awakened and I haven't. It's just simply the 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 glue that was there is no longer there. And so something, either the friction increases or there's a kind of distancing or yeah a, a barrenness that takes place and 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 you know there's a heartbreak in moving on or or, or something and, and but it happens so that's one possibility the other possibility is that you deepen into love mm. and the other is uh not consciously but perhaps subconsciously um resonant with the frequency of openness that is in you in as the awakened one. But again, it's not about the awakening. It's about the possibility of meeting in a deeper place, meeting mm. in beingness and something in them rises up, not because they go, Oh, Oh, I need to understand the same spiritual things as you, but because love grows in that fertile ground. You can still have different some of interests and so on. So yes, many, but I think some of that is what happened in our relationship. Well, yes. I mean, you you were not on the you were on the path of transformation, but you were not on the same, uh, if you like, spiritual trajectory as I was, um, and neither, you know. 
well, there was a kind of crossover. Mm. But yes, that that is what happened, I guess. I think it is some of what <clears throat> what happened. It was just that, uh, you know, we could sh- shift from, it wasn't that I wasn't interested. I, interest is a ridiculous word to use. How can you be interested in awakening? Well, it's a lot of an, people it's, it's are not these an intellectual. Days. It's like, oh, I'm going to study awakening at some college. Well, it's not an interest. Are interested it's like a... In it's like, wow, I, I wasn't, you know, that was nothing, nothing, none of that was kind of happening. But there was a longing for an inner kind of freedom that, that in a way you reflected because I knew, I kind of knew something had happened to you, but we didn't speak about it in the sense that, you know, to sit down and say, well, hold on a minute, what's happening in this relationship? You've reached the exalted height of awakening and I, and I haven't. Therefore, I need to follow the practices that you've set down. And it was very much just a fragrance of a, you know, of, I thought the light, the candle, you, you, you held out the light and like a moth, I was searching for the light. It wasn't your light. It was the light. It's a very different thing. But I think that is some of what happened in our relationship and it didn't repel me. It attracted me. Yes. So there we have two possibilities. The one that falls away as in my previous relationship and is in in your previous relationship. Yes. Dramatically or undramatically in our cases, both quite dramatically. dramatically. <laughs> but and then there's the other possibility in that the the that which has revealed itself as the open field of we can call it many things, presence, love, awakeness, whatever we might call it. Um, that starts to inform the relationship or is the ground from which a a relationship can take place, uh, whether there are common interests or not. I mean, we we did both have a a sort of primary uh, call in our lives individually. We might call that the path of transformation. <laughs> yeah, you were on your path of transformation, and I had been on my path of transformation. Mine took on more spiritual qualities because that's just my forever interest ever since I was a child. More esoteric mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, metaphysical, and so on. Um, um, but there, there, there was a crossover, a meeting place, but also not. So the ground of of beingness is where we met. The ground of presence is where we met. And we grew as love within that. So that's another possibility. Do we talk, did we talk about awakening? Not, I don't think we did. I think I shared my experience, Um, but mostly not. And the only time we speak about awakening is in the past couple of years because we both now work together, yeah? Mm. In the teaching, we both, yeah, are very much involved in that. So we talk about it in the, in the only in the context of our interactions with individuals, our interactions with each other within the context of teaching and so on. Um, and any insights or reflections that may come from that, which is important in the work that we do. (laughs) Mm. Um, But in terms of uh, a topic, um, it's not been, uh, it's not been something at the forefront of our relationship. Truth. Yes the truth of how we feel, the truth of how we are, the self-honesty, the self-revelation, the deep listening to ourselves and to each other has been the bedrock of our relationship. So I think that's what probably changes in an awakened relationship. Um, Do we talk about ordinary things? Of course we do. We talk about who's going to walk the the dog dog and... Uh, you know, what we're going to eat this weekend and Uh, what we'd like to, yeah, uh, the stuff of life. Do we talk about opinions? Actually, no, we don't. Uh, 
personally, I'm quite not, I'm not opinion based. I don't think, am I? <laughs> That's not where I come from. I have no interest in, in sharing my opinion about this or my opinion about that, but uh, I don't think I ever have been actually. Um, but we talk about ordinary things if they're relevant or, or not. Yeah. I think the the just responding to that, I think that you know it's it's not like the idea the, the, these ideas, you know, are, are some of them are just myths in such a sense. And so it's not extreme. It's not like ordinary, regular conversation doesn't show up. You know, ordinary kind of belief or opinion, or I have a view of something to do with the world, or it, it doesn't show up. You know, it's a blank individual who's just sort of got nothing there. It's just that everything is becomes kind of uh, light. Everything is light. And, and not, it's not a, it's not a, nothing is like, Oh, you know, wow, isn't it? It's the, the, everything is held with a lightness. So if I would, you know, I, I think about the world, I talk about the world, you know, just don't, don't believe so much of my own opinion about it so that all opinions can be held in the lightness of like a cloud that floats across the sky. An opinion is, is, is a conclusion. And that conclusion is either it's uh one that uh, I can, uh, you know, hold on to tightly because it fits in with my yeah, fundamental exactly. beliefs, or it's one that I want to reject because it doesn't fit in. That, in our experience, that doesn't take place. No. Uh, it, Yes, we can talk about things that we see, things that we experience, even the world or even through the social media. We go, oh, that's interesting or, oh, that seems challenging or, oh, that's a little scary. Or, but, but none of it is held in that conclusive way and therefore it's not a battle of opinion and it also allows a, 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 either a there's not an investment in it. There's not a personal investment yeah, in it, yeah. nor a clinging tight to this is the way it is and, and I'm going to be filled with fear now and that's it, or filled with expectation and hope and that's it. It's it's yeah. the whole relationship to the world comes undone. That's exactly Because you're not that, actually exactly being the point. informed yeah. by that. You're informed by beingness you're informed by everything else is a phenomenal experience everything everything is phenomenal it comes and it goes it keeps changing it keeps yeah everything is possible there are a million zillion permutations possible and they're all happening at the same time and everyone's overloaded and everyone's yeah but we don't have to pick that one and pick that one and reject that one and argue with it and fight with it and base our whole sense of safety or lack of safety or well-being or lack of well-being on that. There I really are wish that, I really, that come I, and go. I, I really hope that, you know, whoever's listening, you know, can 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 pick up the the sort of vastness of what a mode is speaking to, because it's 100 percent radical shift in relationship to the phenomenal world <laughs> rooted in love and a kind of truth that is unspeakable to a certain extent. It's not an abdication of one's relationship. There is still a relationship ha happening, but it's on a whole different kind of level. And that doesn't make it um, above or below or outside of anything. It's like, it's actually exquisitely natural, but it's just not the self has come undone. The self right. that needs to build itself over and over and over and over. You would not believe. And once you start seeing it, how, how many times the self builds itself through its opinions, its fixed opinions per times per day. 
It's doing it. You don't even notice it's doing it. There I am. There I am. The self, the self, the self. To the end of the day, we go to sleep, we wake up and we do it a million times again each day. That's over. Or we don't. (laughs) Or we don't. That's what I mean. And we have to to say again, I have to say again, (laughs) that awakening is not about becoming an awakened individual. That's not how it's experienced. So it's not another persona that you wear, that you take into social interactions or intimate relationships or into the world. You don't walk in this world as an awakened individual. That's not how it's experienced. The whole sense of personhood taking ownership of anything comes undone. There's simply clarity. And I don't mean clarity because you're always got this clear mind and there's never any fuzziness, although the tendency is not to have fuzziness, but it, or certainty. It's not about certainty or always being right. Not that kind of clarity. It's just that sky nature becomes the, the primary sky nature. So then when you meet the phenomenal world with all its clouds and its weather systems and its, yeah, you're not lost in that. You're not, you're not lost. You don't lose your self in that and become that or become attached to that or become against that. You, it just, it just all floats through. And of course, some things might hurt more than others if there's a death close by or a loss. But even that is part of the phenomenal world. So the, yes, there is a lightness of being, but you don't walk around as I'm an awakened being and how am I going to interact and, how can I find another awakened being to talk to? Really, that is just not part of the picture. <laughs> it's not. It, just, it occurred to me. It's it's really not a new coat that you put on because you've got the shiny coats of the awakened one to replace the old beaten up, worn out coat of the ego-based self. It, it, there is no coat. You are naked. There is only sky. How that is for you is extremely exquisitely individual. To one, it shows up in this way. To another, it shows up as in another way. It's utterly unique and it cannot be conceptualized or preconceived by the egoic mind. It's whatever, whatever, however it imagines it is. It's not. It's, it's, it's this. It's this, it's this, it's this. It doesn't really matter in that sense. This conversation and nobody is knows erroneous. And nobody <laughs> notices and nobody cares and none of it matters. Nobody cares. Nobody goes, oh, look, there's an awakened individual <laughs> because they're acting in this way or because they're saying this or that. None of that takes place. So you live in the ordinary and you're totally free of that. You're totally free of the concern for that. And this is uh, it's why I've always liked the uh, kind of image of the Sufi, if you like, who's just sweeping the the floor. Nobody knows. Yeah, the Sufi's still just you sweep the floor. the floor. Yeah, still you clean the house. Still you have to. Yeah, and 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 that's the human experience. And yeah, you know. <laughs> all the chores are there. I have but to go this, out and dig the snow out. I have to, you know, we have to go and take the car to the car washes. <laughs> but, 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 but what does change, and I, I, I think, I think, I think it does, is that all of that is done without resistance, right? It's not a problem. Okay, if there's some tiredness or you've got a really busy day and there's just, you know, or whatever it is, uh, it, it, you know, you might say, well, I don't really you know, that's just one thing too many, or I can't attend. But, but all of it just is taken much more lightly. And the stuff of life, I I, I personally don't find it a, a, a burden. Yeah. It's, or, or you know, it's, it's like you can get your hands dirty in the world, whatever that means, whether that's doing your tax returns or this, that and the other. And, you know, some of that might be challenging or might require a new skill set or whatever it might be. But it, it's not really the burden to the self that it used to be. You know, I know that I carried a lot of fear about many of those things and I would avoid them and, uh, you know, 
I would even avoid having a bank account in my early days because it was too scary. You know, I didn't want to be trapped. I didn't want to be in the system. Or well, I, didn't I just wanna... didn't have any money. <laughs> well, that as well. <laughs> you know, so, but now you do what you do to function. You do what you have to do to function and life just informs you as you go along. So there's a great lightness of being in the ordinary as well. Um, it's just the phenomenal play and 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 there are great times of of not doing as well non-doing it, it, however it flows the river keeps flowing according to your own destiny and you attend to what needs to be attended to without resistance without complaints without grumbling without burdensomeness um or not yes <laughs> hi yeah Okay, it's a it's a to 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 know that all all phenomena is impermanent, and the river just flows along. There is a deep grace in in being able to to uh, see that as a as a an abiding seeing, which means that all of this just passes. It's all scenery, <laughs> and one day the scenery of this that I call my life. My experience will also pass, and also my relationships will pass. Will also pass. <laughs> will pass. Yeah, and it's just us with God at the end of the day. So actually, you know, I really enjoyed. I, I know we've had a laugh here in some ways, you know, but I want to thank the the person who who uh, sent in that question because they were they were daring and interesting and good you know, deep questions to ask about the nature of the interaction between that and that, between apparent one and apparent other. There is no other. As Ramana Maharshi said, there is no other. So we thank you for that quest that 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 those questions. And uh, and I hope that we've kind of shed some light, some nuance, you know, on on these delicate of matters. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, thank you so much for listening, everyone. Happy Christmas to you. If that means anything, it, whatever it means is fantastic. It's just an impermanent arising of something that we call Christmas. Um, <laughs> may you be well. May you be blessed. May you have a great day. And uh, and thank you so much, Amoda. And uh, I'll see you soon. In the Downstairs. kitchen. <laughs> oh, we have to say it. It's a blast from the old days. All right. Um, All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the question. Namaste.